Alright folks, welcome to episode 7 of Young Justice Review. Ursan here, going solo this time. We are looking at episode 7, Denial. Pretty interesting episode, very metaphysical. And also Denial in the sense that this is a Wally episode, which I thought was pretty cool. It kind of deals pretty much with uh, his sort of denial in the mystical arts and him being mostly science-backed and science-based which i thought was pretty cool and you see his sort of character development within the episode talk a lot about how he kind of fakes it to kind of impress megan mcgann but then at the end of the episode you see that his sort of instant connection with kent nelson who is dr fate or dons the helmet of dr fate in this case how that relationship kind of morphs him and how he kind of has to play a little bit up towards the end, but still how he connects and kind of how he evolves in this episode. Just to give you an idea of the characters that were introduced, you do get Madame Xanadu. You do get Kent Nelson, who dons the helmet of Dr. Fate, who is named Naboo. You do get a cat named Tickle, who Dr. Fate says isn't really a cat, but turns out he's the familiar of someone named Clarion who is a Lord of Chaos. And we find out in this episode that Dr. Fate is a Lord of Order. So I want to see how that yin-yang sort of aspect comes with the both of them. It seems like you have Chaos and Order, so the two can kind of balance each other out in some way. We find out that Tikal is an anchor for Clarion. Clarion can't hang out within this realm without its anchor. We're also introduced to Abracadabra, which I thought was pretty funny. At the end, he loses his clothes. I thought that was kind of a funny thing. So pretty much the way I look at this episode is it's very mystical, right? Something about the tower that we're introduced to. is The tower offers mystical, magical outlets to move about. We find out that Red Tornado, according to Red Tornado, Kent Nelson has been missing for 23 days. And he kind of chalks it up to maybe something's going on, but this is uncharacteristic of him. Kent Nelson walks into Madame Xanadu in the beginning, walks into Madame Xanadu's parlor, and wants to connect with his beloved Inza. We're also introduced to her in picture form, but turns out that she's a quote-unquote fraud, although in the comic books it's a little bit different. And that's kind of how the issue happens, abracadabra kind of blasts him or they teleport into this thing where he's being uh, tortured for 23 days and that's how we're introduced to abracadabra and clarion and tico they seem to communicate with each other so eventually fi find out in the episode that tico is the anchor to clarion what i also find pretty interesting is that this is a wally episode and since he's in denial of any sort of mysticism and magical stuff he chalks everything up to science red tornado lets the team know because they asked hey if you have any sort of mission that we can go on we would be great red tornado always lets them know missions are given by batman but he lets them know listen kent nelson is a friend of mine and he's been missing they eventually get into the tower and kind of hilarity ensues i guess you can say Kent Nelson seems to have this like ominous figure where he protects the tower through like soul something or another. It's kind of like in Harry Potter when Dumbledore has like that ghost looking thing when someone enters the um, Order of the Phoenix compound, if you will. A couple of things that we do find out as well in this episode is Kent hasn't donned the mask of naboo the dr fate helmet in 65 years naboo needs a human host in order to work it so a human host has to don the helmet of naboo and become dr fate but it's better if there's someone who is more well versed in the mystical arts magic things along that nature which also figures because we are introduced to a mystical aspect of this episode what's also pretty interesting in this episode is that eventually 
Wally, the denier, fitting because the episode is called Denial. He winds up donning the mask because Kent Nelson eventually dies after being tortured for 23 days. It's just too much for his body. And he's 106 years old. And he tells him, you got to have fate. And he dons the mask. He dons the helmet. And he goes inside of the mask. And Dr. Fate Naboo houses the host vessel and its soul, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. And that's most of the character development inside. He talks, Kent Nelson and Wally talks a little bit about what's going on and how the process works by donning the helmet of Dr. Fate. And what's interesting is you hear this sort of audible echo almost a couple of seconds before someone actually says the words. The words are being said as an echo. So I thought that was a nice little, not an Easter egg, but a nice little touch that the writers and the creators of this series and also this episode that they give. A couple of questions I had going into this is how the anchor works for Clary and the Lord of Chaos and what happens to a human host when they house and they don the Dr. Fate helmet and what repercussions does this have in the future? So these are a couple of things that I found pretty interesting. Also, a little bit of foreshadow. When Wally is about to take off the mask as he dons the helmet, Kent Nelson says, find your own spitfire. For example, that, and then the mask comes off. What's also interesting is we see in the very next scene, Wally talking to Artemis. So a little bit of foreshadowing, which I thought was pretty cool. Overall, this episode was really awesome. It was very cool to watch. Very quick, too. It kind of just, like, breezed on by. Overall, I would give this episode maybe a 9.5. Really cool. It was really interesting to look at the mystical arts. Really interesting to look at the inside of the Tower of Fate and how it works and mysticism and magical aspects of it and how our heroes have to kind of combat this thing. And also Wally, who's a great character, and Dr. Fate, who is also a fantastic character, how they communicate with each other, and really in one day, how Wally can kind of grow. I'm interested to see how he further progresses moving forward in the series now that he's had this interaction and he sees more than what science is. All right, folks, that was episode seven of Young Justice Denial. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Coming up next will be episode 8. Peace.